Welcome back to another video. This will be regarding a new generative AI model. This is entitled Spark 3D. And we see over here the, the main page on GitHub. And we see over here, this is from a university from Singapore. Also, we have Math Magic and Imperial College London. Now, what is the most important thing about this model is that it will output high resolution 3D meshes. In this case, around 2 million faces. Now, for the case study, I have used um, a screenshot of the following puffer fish, and I made a previous video regarding this where I compared other models. So this will be the output mesh. What is really interesting over here will be regarding those details that um, the puffer fish will have within the spines. And we see how fine those will be detailed within this model. Overall, the algorithm still has problems, especially with symmetry. As we can see over here, the puffer fish will only have one eye, since uh, this was a screenshot and we see it over there. It didn't actually take into account the symmetry. We see over here the following fin. And again, it's lacking details on the back. But considering that the high resolution uh, for this model is so well defined, I also want to compare this directly with the 3D scan. So let's jump within Blender where I have prepared the scene. So this will be the output model. As you can see in this case, the triangle count is pretty close to 2 million. If I will go within edit mode within Blender, we're going to see that this will be a triangulated mesh. And if I will compare this with a 3D scan made from Artec, this was the, the original one, we're going to see that this was also triangle mesh. But we see how fine those details for the spine will be defined within this model. And this is the, the main um, advantage of this new algorithm. It can replicate fine details. If you would compare this with other models, for example, Viscom, we're going to see that in this case, this was the triangulated mesh output. This was roughly at around uh, half a million triangles. And uh, we see that Viscom had better symmetry overall. So we have those fins, we have the eyes, and uh, over here on the back, maybe the pufferfish lacks details, such as the tail, but it's the same for the one generated within, with this model. Another model over here, this will be again, triangulated mesh. I also added over here two models made from Rodin. As you can see, this will be quad, and this will also lack detail to the back. And uh, this again will be a quad mesh. I also have the models with CSM. And we see over here that uh, this will be made from, uh, from quads. And this as well. And we also have the models made with tripo. Over here, the puffer fish is a little bit wider than it should be. And uh, this will be triangulated mesh. And again, this will be triangulated mesh. We can now do some changes. We can also generate quads directly within Tripo. But we see over here that it added those spines directly on the eyes of the fish. So these kind of uh, spines that uh, the puffer fish has, um, the fish can, uh, let's say, inflate those um, with either water um, or air. And this uh, in inflation will make them look, let's say, larger and more intimidating to potential uh, predators. But uh, in this case, the fact that the AI tool added those, um, those spines directly on the, the eye of the fish, it's not that, um, that well defined. So it maybe was this uh, spine over here, as we can see, but it's quite far away from, uh, from that eye. Over here within the new model, we're going to see that the fish will actually have uh, four spines that will be generated directly onto that uh, puffer fish head uh, eye. So as you can see over here within the reference, this was the reference. There were no spines on that shape. So it looks like the generative AI from uh, Spark 3D will add additional elements, um, let's say, directly onto the object, not according to the reference. Still, I'm quite impressed that the model is so fine defined with so many details, and this can be used for a wide potential uh, application, especially I'm considering, uh, let's say, wood carving application that's starting from a photo, you will output a high detail 3D model that can be then further, let's say, uh, 
manufactured. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. I will position a similar video over here on the left side, and I will also add the subscribe button to the right. So that's it. Thanks for watching.